Ngide Zaburi. Let's share Psalms. Jana Mirango Tatnaga Tatu, Murongo Ambede, Murongo Agatatu, Turangize Yozaburi. Psalms 133 from verse 1, and we end these Psalms. Zaburi, Yijana Mirango Tatnaga Tatu. Psalms 133. Yes, Zaburi. These Psalms. Itapokango Dorede, Eleganib Shiza, Nivigi Kundiro, Kabaza and Dinga Baturana, Bahuje, Bimez and Kamabota Igichiro, Chin, Shiasuka Kumutwe, Agatembera Mugan, Wamugan, Wabga Aroni, Agatembera Kumisozo in Yendaye, Gandhi, Bimez and Kimacho Kuri Herimoni, Kimano Kira Kumisozi Sioni, Kukaho, Adu, we take a take a Kumogisha. Let's read in English version, Psalms 133 from verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, and on the beard of Aaron running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Helmon which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there, is, for there the Lord has commanded the blessings, life forevermore. Amen. The Gospel of Jesus Christ written by John, Chapter 17, verse 20, up to 23. Please read. Nanje mbahaye ubwiza wampaye ngo babe umwe kuko natwe turi umwe jewe mbe muri bo nawe ube muri nge ngo babe umwe rwose ngo abisi bamenye ko ari bo bantumye ukabakunda kuko wankunze amen Let's read in English version from verse 20 chapter 17 of John The Bible says I do not ask for this only but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Verse 22, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Amen. Let's thank God who has given to us this beautiful morning. It is that every morning has its own blessing. And the Lord has done good to give us this morning to be in his house. We are in the month of unity and resilience. That's why today's words are around unity. Zaburi uh, the Psalms we have read This is one of the Psalms of this ascending <laughs> ascending Psalms you can understand yeah. uh, Ascension Psalms are 15 they start from 100, Psalms 120, 
to 134. Why are they called ascension psalms? Sometimes you read Ascension Psalms, Ascension Psalms. Why are they called Ascension Psalms? There are two reasons why they are called Ascension Psalms. The first reason is that they used to sing these psalms when they were heading to the mount, to the church. Every Israelite should go to the temple at least three times in a year. On the day of Easter, on the day of Pentecost, and on the day, and the day of Tent. 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 Yes. Tent. Yes. Those three times a year, every Israel person should go to Jerusalem. Because the temple of the Lord was in Jerusalem. By the time they went to Jerusalem in the temple, they used to say they're going to the mount of the Lord. And to go on the mount, they have to ascend. The second, why it is called uh, ascending or ascension psalms, when they reach to Jerusalem in the temple, for them to enter into the temple of the Lord, they had to, to go up through passing 15 stairs. Yes, Those 15 stairs, every stair they had to sing one song. For each and every stair they should sing one psalm. By the end of it, they move on another stair. And as they sing per each and every stair, that is how they become joyful to be in the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit of God used to fall on them through those songs. And this psalm is the psalm of David. Most of the psalms are for David. When did uh, David come up with this psalm? This is when uh, the chief in command Abner brought all the soldiers of Saul to David. You know that Saul is the first king of Israel. And you know how long uh, Saul learned after or was. Um, Hunting for David. And after the death of Saul, David took the south kingdom. And he went to Hebron Mount. He spent seven years on Hebron Mountain, leading only one family, one tribe of Judah. How this happened? The Bible says after the death of Saul, Saul he left one son, Ishibosheth. After he left Ishibosheth, Abner the chief in command, he made him a king. But those seven years, they ended just as fight between Ariko him and David. But finally, the soldiers of Abner uh, lost the battle. And after losing the battle, Abner took the rest of the military soldiers they had to David. The day Abner 
took all the soldiers and reunite with the soldiers of David. That's when the wall ended in Israel. And they became one tribe. After that, David saw that unity and he came up with his psalms. And he said, Behold, it is wonderful, beautiful. And it is lovely that brothers, brethren live in unity. And he said that it is a precious oil anointed on Aaron's head and this oil throws to the beard, through the beards of Aaron and to the limits to the collars of his robes. And he said it is like a dew the dew from Helmon Mountain and throwing to the Zion Mountain because that is the very place that the Lord commanded blessings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. This is beautiful. It is lovely that brothers live in unity. David compared this with two great things. First, he compared this with the precious oil. Precious oil from head pulled out on on the head of Ayo the baron. And this oil th throw through the beards until the end of his robes. And he compared this with the dew on the Helmon Mountain. This dew throws to that mountain until the end of the Mount of Zion. This part or these Psalms of David, it has three important words. The first word is to be amazed of this unity. He was amazed from this unity. The second, and David gave two illustrations for this unity. This is the oil and you. That is blessing from unity. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's see the first word about this amazement. Even the creation, God, when He created a man, a man had to live with God. That is the mission of God when he created a man. To live in unity. When you read in the book of Genesis. You will see that God used to visit this person on a daily basis. This shows the unity between a man and God. Between man and God. But after, we will see when the sin came. The sin separated God and man. Because the sin take away unity. When Adam when Adam lost the unity between him and God, this unity disappeared for a long time. Let's see the consequences, the effect of this, the loss of this unity. Whenever they are the, the, the loss of the unity, there are always consequences. You will see the conflicts between Adam and Eve. The day Adam and Eve sinned, God 
paid a visit as usual. And they moved from where they used to be. They disappeared. They fled away. And when God asked them where they are, they just replied they are naked. They and God asked them, who told you that you are naked? Did you eat from the other fruit? And listen to the response of Adam. The other woman you gave to me. You could give to me the other lady, nothing could Are you happen. Re, you re, the day when God uh, punished Adam and Eve. <laughs> Some <laughs> Some scholars are Wise people used to say that Adam sang the song from which he didn't do practice. <laughs> it, is, it is obvious. <laughs> it is obvious. <laughs> From the song of Adam, he said, This is one of my bones, uh, you know, part of my body. This is the song of him. He even named her. And a beautiful name. But the day they lost the unity, he just said, this is the other woman you gave to me. If you could not give to me this woman, nothing could have happened. This is the consequence of the loss of the unity. After having children, after having Cain and Abel, there was also conflict. And Abel Cain killed Abel. This is the consequence. This is the effect of loss of unity. If you continue to read the word of God, you will see that Abraham had children Isaac and Ishmael. From that very day, conflict started. Until this very day, I'm standing here, the consequences are there. Many years ago, thousands and thousands. Until today, the consequences are still there. Those consequences have continued. Reading from the word of God, you will see from Isaac and, and Jacob talking Those are the, their father is Isaac but they didn't have a unity there was a conflict between them uh, Jacob had 12 children and all the children of Jacob they conflicted in those between. are consequences of unity. When there is no unity, always conflict comes. And only sin bring everything in effect. Whenever this lost, this unity lost, God no lost. When you read in the book of Genesis, you will see that people made a great project of building the tower and to reach to God. They had unity. For them to build a very strong house until they reach to God. And after that, God saw that. And he said, These people can do everything. And God separated them. Because this unity had a wrong purpose. People started speaking different languages. Different tongues. But praise God. Though people separated for a long time. <laughs> but praise God because he brought back the unity. We'll see very later. 
This is what amazed David. How again the all tribes again reunited. The second. We, we see two illustration of David. And if I get a time, I will spend much time on this. David shows an illustration of precious oil. And again give the illustration of the dew. And he's saying the unity seems like the precious oil. His precious oil from the book of Exodus. God commanded Moses to make this oil. Using five things. He had to mix good incense. There can be vulgar mulabjo. Tauta mnyar guandanga. Yara gomba kuvanga ibiti bita. Five different trees. Imibavu. Incense. Ishangi. That type of tree. Madarasin. Can. Kesia. Ibjob Jose biarbumbaga changu se biarko la gamavu tayagachi. All those different trees had to make this precious oil. And this oil should be much. And it should, they should be pulled on the head of the priest. This oil had to do two Main this is the oil to anoint the priest that God could choose. From the head of the king who gonna read the people. And the prophet who had to serve from his time. And this very anointing should mean that this is a, a set apart person for a specific work. And there was power from this oil to enable this person to perform the task, the responsibilities. Praise the Lord. This is the very oil that should be anointed the person who is set apart for the ministry. And it had power to enable him. It means whenever God chooses you, he gives you the power. The second. This oil meant the Holy Spirit that God will pull on Jesus. When you read the gospel of Jesus according to Luke, chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says when Jesus reached to synagogue, they brought to him scroll and he read that the spirit of God is upon me. That's why the Lord anointed me and preach the good news to the people. Jesus spoke his mission that God gave to him that he came to set free those who are to Bring sight to those who don't, didn't have sight. And to proclaim the goodness of God. So this oil should be anointed to Jesus. And the Bible says that God put a lot of oil upon him. And some says this oil is pulled upon the head of the and this oil flow until the end of his rope. It means this oil reaches to every part of the world. Of of the same oil that Jesus was anointed. It is hard to throw the whole body of Jesus. And once we say the body of Jesus, the church of Jesus, the very oil that 
Yaragomba kumanuka. It had to throw. Akamanuka kagera mu itorero. It had to throw unto the church. Itorero ni umugeni wa Kristo watoranijwe. The church is the bride of Jesus. Kandi aya mabuta yasobanura giki. And this oil meant. Twavuze ngo bavangaga amavuta ibiti bigera muri bitaha. He said they mixed five different trees. Kugira ngo aya mavuta abashe gutanga odere nziza. So that this oil give a sweet a pleasant aroma. Atange impumuro nziza. A good smell. Atangi mpumuro nziza. For it to give a good smell. Abumva ayo mavuta yose bayazeho. So that those who who smell this oil come to eat. Uko ni kumwuka wera wasuye mu itorero. This is the same way the Holy Spirit pulled in the church. Kugira ngo itorero rigire impumuro nziza. So that the church had the good smell. Abumva iyo mpumuro yose. Who sense the good smell? Bagane bagane itorero rya Kristo. To the church of Jesus. Kuko rifite impumuro nziza. Because it has a good smell. Paul and the Kabi Corinthians ba kabiri. Paul wrote to second Corinthians. Gitete aka mwangwa 14. Chapter 4 verse 14. Avuga ngo imana nishimwe. Praise be to God. Bi hori tunesheza muri that he always give us to come to that give us a good smell so that to spread it everywhere because we are the good smell from God and this oil that the church has it called all people to come to the church the wise people say this oil has attraction. It is a smell that attracts. That's why in the day of Pentecost all the people from Jerusalem they started to join the church. Because they, they saw, they smelled the good smell. And that's why they didn't go home. Because there was a smell of the Holy Spirit. If you read in the word of God they Those of the church could add in numbers on a daily basis. Why? Why this? There was a good smell, a special smell. This is what God wants from us. Because of this anointing we have. We should spread all over the good smell. So that all people around us will smell, will sense a good smell. A good smell. Good smell. Praise the Lord. The second is giving an illustration. It's like a dew from Helmon. A dew from Helmon coming up to the mountain of Zion. Geographically, no. From Helmon and Zion, there are 10 million kilometers. 2,000 kilometers. It is not easy. The Mount of Helmon is in the north. North of Israel. It is a very tall mountain. 2,800 kilometers. 2,800 kilometers. On the mountain. On the peak of that mountain, uh, there, there was um, glass. Snow. Yes, there was a lot of snow. There was snow, there is water. And there was water, there is always dew. The story said that the north of Israel spread water to all the rest of Israel. When you reach to Zion, it is a, a mountain in the south. From the desert, from the wilderness. But even if Zion is in the wilderness, but things that all the plants and fruits from north, north they, in the south they should get from them because of the unity. I give you a simple example. Do you cultivate Irish potato in Kigari? That someone has a field where he plants Irish potato in Kigari? Do you plant Irish potato? 
Do you eat Irish potatoes? Do you eat Irish potatoes? Where they come from? From north. Just because of unity. Praise the Lord. The same dew from Hermon Mountain. Throwing to the mountains of Zion. That is the place where the Lord commands. That is the place where the Lord commands. Where there is unity, there is collaboration. Let me also mention this. This is very important. Where there is a dew, the soil gets humid and it gives fruit because the, 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 the soil is wet in the same way the Holy Spirit comes like a dew and where he reaches people bear fruits praise the Lord People bear fruit. You cannot bear fruits without the Holy Spirit. That's why you see many people in the church. And they spend a long time, years and years, but without the Holy Spirit. Fruits. Why? They have the absence of the Holy Spirit. When there is Holy Spirit, there is unity. When there is Holy Spirit, there are fruits of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. That is the dew from Helmond and to Zion Mountain. And all these fruits of the Holy Spirit start to bear. Every person starts to profit. You can come to the house of God without Holy Spirit fruits. But when you get in the house, you start to get fruits. You can come from outside without having someone to love you. Even from your family, from your siblings, no one loves you. But when you reach in the house of God, you find friends. Not from same blood, not from same tribe. Having no relationship. That is the very due from heaven. It is the frost to Zion. That is the love you met in the house of God. And Rukun shows to you. He shows the same love. Without a relationship. Without from same family. Not even same region. But the other love from the Holy Spirit. Profit. Providing God love, the same way Zion used to profit to benefit the people from mountain. You can come in the house of God without joy. But reaching in the house, you find joy, and you start to feel joy. When you didn't ever feel joy, the very dew from heaven and the throw to the mountain of Zion from the other wilderness without a without plants and you find plants and you find the fruits of the Holy Spirit and we start to benefit the fruits of the Holy Spirit because you are in the same place the third the Bible has said the very place there was unity that is where God commanded it cannot be blessed if there is no unity it is impossible it is difficult to find blessings The Bible says an, a number of blessings from unity. I read the word and has told me unity it helped the church to grow in spirit. Without unity, the church cannot grow. The second what we see in the church. That's where the world, people of the world will see. Yes, oh when Jesus was praying a prayer. 
priesthood prayer. Priesthood prayer. That was he prayed from the upper room. And he has three different parts. But the last part. Jesus prayed for those who would believe him. We were not there. But Jesus prayed for us. I pray for those who would believe because of my words. And he prayed for them to become one. As I and Father we are one. So that they know that I am in you. And you in me. And them in me. Praise the Lord. Jesus prayed for you. Jesus didn't pray that you have a lot of money. Jesus didn't pray for other people. But he prayed for us to be one. For to have unity. So that when we have unity. That's when the world will recognize. That you are the children of God. That's why they will know that he was sending him. In you and you are in me. Praise the Lord. This is that many are coming to unity. The world will know us because of our unity. This is that many are coming to church. The world will not recognize us because we sing a lot. Not because you know how to pray. This is that many sit to many can do curricula. The reason that will cause the world to know us. So they know the children of God. It is the unity. Very difficult to separate God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't know how wise you are. You told us that you graduated. Yes, that's very good. It is good. Can you differentiate God's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Are you able? Can you separate them? Can you distinguish God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? In the same manner, we can't. Paul gave a good illustration. The body is one, but it has different parts. But they all work together. Those parts work together. They love one another. They help one another. They collaborate. They they help one another. Even if one is wounded or offended, all the rest of the people are wounded. Is here someone who saw from the people of the people of the people of the people of the people? Have you ever seen the parts of your body conflicted to one another? They are all in unity. They work one another. Even if one part of the people of the people has done wrong the rest of the body accepts. I just want to give you a good example. When someone is walking and he falls, he just falls, maybe he's wounded from the leg and the leg is broken. Whose mistake? Is it a mistake of the eye? Is it because of... Have you ever found out the rest of the body's parts? They all work together. Because they are the same body parts. This is the very unity that the church should have. The church means unity. Without unity in the church, that's not a church. Just a associational company. Yes, it's a company trying to look like a church. But church is unity. The church is unity. It is one. Oneness. We love one another. Helping one another. Sharing burdens. Yes. Let's continue. Some people are saying that we need to pray for one another. We need to pray for one another. The unity produces good smell. 
From the apostles, from the day of Pentecost, every person came, ran, and the church became, the numbers became, you know, adding day by day. The last unity, this is a forward test. Yeah. It is a forward test to what we'll have in heaven. How do you think heaven will be? Will be like? I believe we'll be in the great moment. In the great moment. Without separation. Here in the world we love one another. But the time comes and we separate. And heaven, we will live forever and ever. And together with God. Together with the ones we love. Forever. When we are in the church having unity, it's like we are fought, we are testing from what we'll get in heaven. I've said that from the time of the people spoke different languages. But the day of Pentecost, they are heard. People heard. A person speaks from a tongue that another will. In heaven will speak the same tongue. Do you think how many, many tongues will I speak? How many tongues will, shall we speak in heaven? From your understanding. English. Which language? In the church we speak. You should speak the same language. Because in heaven they speak one language. If you want to go to heaven. Start to practice now in unity. Because. We will speak the same language. And we will live in the same language. And one heaven. If you see us having divisions, know that we are not going to. Heaven. I used to tell people that when someone is preparing himself to go in the road, you start to have exercise, you know, having information about the Sometimes even you get to know some of the terms they use. Are, really, are you really going to heaven? Those who are going to heaven start to practice Because unity. in heaven will be one. Same language. One language. Have one vision. One idea. One language. May God bless you. May God bless you. This unity, it is the one from Jesus. If you see the church without unity, know that that is not a church. There is something trying to look like a church. Because Jesus for us to have unity in the same way him and God they are one. May God bless you. May God bless you. Can we pray? Let's stand and pray. Uh, always the devil, Satan doesn't want you to go to God. He wants us to conflict one He wants always conflicts. And Satan is wise. He knows how to fight. He knows how to give fights. You know how to attack. He attacked the first family and he separated the first family. They strategy. until today he still has the strategies. His strategy is to separate. It is to 
take away Kuko ahari umwe haba hari imbaraga Where there is unity there is power Ahari umwe ni humwoka za korera Where there is unity the Holy Spirit Kamu works Kamu kokora hatari ubumwe The Holy Spirit does not work where there is no, no unity No wonder abantu benshi bavuga ngo afite umwoka The way you see many people saying they have spirit Bana kana hanura ndi mindi nibindi simbi Sighing and doing other things I Ari wasanga nta umwe buhari But without unity Menya ngo nta mwoko uhari No there is no spirit Ahari umwoka we haba hari ubumwe Where there is Holy Spirit there is Imani bakomeza mu ngumwe strengthen you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul wrote to Ephesians 4:3. Abangu mugira umwete. Mugira Of strengthening one another in the unity of faith. That is the yoke of peace. Kadusenge mana. Let's pray. Mana turagushimiye. Mana turakubashye cyane. Mana tugushimiye kino gitondo kiza. Mana tugushimiye kuvuga nubwo ko bwa mu ijambo ryawe. Mana tugushimiye kwa dusaba ibumwe. Ugiye kuzamuka mu gami bwawe. Wasenze isengesho ryiza. Wasenze ngo abazakwizera bose abari bo batwebwe ngo tuzabe umwe. Kuko nawe na data muri umwe. Ngo ni bwa bisi bazamenya kuko turabana b'Imana. Turasenze ngo ubumwe bwongere kandi ugaragara mu itororo rya Toro ryawe nubumwe to ryawe nurugingo to ryawe numura Kristo ufite ingingo nishi zitandukanye zigomba kubana zihuje zigomba kubana zikundana zigomba kubana zikorerana zigomba kubana zumvikana uko niko Dawidi yabuze ngo ni byiza kandi byigikundiro kwabavandi ngabatwana bahuje bimeze nk'amavuta bimeze nk'ikime yabiganye n'ibintu bikomeye cyane ahari ubumwe haba hari buhimbaraga ahari ubumwe tacumwa kena ijambo ryawe ryarambwe mu gihe cy'intumwa ngo ntacu umuntu yakenaga ngo bagurishaga ibyabo bakabizana mu nzu yawe nabakene baga profita abatagice bafite baga profita byabandi bazanye kuko bwa rumwe bwo mwoka wera turasenze nk'itorero utugaruye buri abumwe utugara abumwe kuko satane gye cyose arwanya umwe bw'abanyetora akabwiba ariko turasenze kitoro ryawe wongere kandi utugaruye ubumwe urakoze mana kuko udufasha ntabwo twabyishoboza ariko turasenze ngo bidushoboze urakoze kubitwemeka kandi kutwumvishe tubisenze mu izina rya Yesu amen